Introduction to Evolution This sound file contains the spoken version of a Wikipedia article on Introduction to Evolution. You are listening to the second part, which contains sections 2, 3, and 4, which deals with the topics of Source of Variation, Genetic Drift, and Modern Evolutionary Synthesis. The second part begins now. Introduction to Evolution From Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org Section 2 Source of Variation Darwin's theory of natural selection laid the groundwork for modern evolutionary theory, and his experiments and observations showed that the organisms and populations varied from each other, that some of these variations were inherited, and that these differences could be acted on by natural selection. However, he could not explain the source of these variations. Like many of his predecessors, Darwin mistakenly thought that hereditable traits were a product of use and disuse, and that features acquired during an organism's lifetime could be passed on to its offspring. He looked for examples such as large ground feeding birds getting stronger legs through exercise and weaker wings from not flying until, like the ostrich, they could not fly at all. This misunderstanding was called the inheritance of acquired characters and was part of the theory of transmutation of species put forward in 1809 by Jean-Baptiste Lamarck. In the late 19th century, this theory became known as Lamarckism. Darwin produced an unsuccessful theory he called pangenesis to try to explain how acquired characteristics could be inherited. In the 1880s, Auguste Wiseman's experiments indicated that changes from use and disuse could not be inherited, and Lamarckism gradually fell from favor. The missing information needed to help explain how new features could pass from a parent to its offspring was provided by the pioneering genetics work of Gregor Mendel. Mendel's experiments with several generations of pea plants demonstrated that inheritance works by separating and reshoveling hereditary information during the formation of sex cells and recombining that information during fertilization. This is like mixing different hands of cards, with an organism getting a random mix of half the cards from one parent and half the cards from the other. Mendel called the information factors. However, they later became known as genes. Genes, <coughs> genes are the basic units of heredity in living organisms. They contain the information that directs the physical development and behavior of organisms. Genes are made of DNA, a long molecule that carries information. This information is encoded in the sequence of individual molecules in the DNA, just as the sequence of the letters and words carries information on a page. The genes are like short instructions built up of the letters of the DNA alphabet. Put together, the entire set of these genes gives the not information 
to serve as an instruction manual of how to build and run an organism. The instructions spelled out by this DNA alphabet can be changed, however, by mutations, and this may alter the instructions carried within the genes. Within the cell, the genes are carried in chromosomes, which are packages for carrying the DNA. It is the reshuffling of the chromosomes that result in a unique combination of genes in an offspring. Since genes interact with one another during the development of an organism, novel combinations of genes produced by sexual reproduction can increase the genetic variability of the population, even without new mutations. The genetic variability of a population can also increase when members of that population interbreed with individuals from a different population, causing gene flow between the population. This can introduce genes into a population that were not present before. Genes are made of DNA. DNA is a long molecule made up of individual molecules called nucleotides. DNA carries information. This information is encoded in the sequence of nucleotides in the DNA, just as a sequence of letters in words carries information on a page. Evolution is not a random process. Although mutations in DNA are random, natural selection is not a process of chance. The environment determines the probability of reproductive success. Evolution is an inevitable result of imperfectly copying, self-replicating organisms reproducing over billions of years under the selective pressure of the environment. The outcome of evolution is not a perfectly designed organism. The end products of natural selection are organisms that are adapted to their present environments. Natural selection does not involve progress towards an ultimate goal Evolution does not strive for more advanced, more intelligent, or more complex life forms. For example, fleas, wingless parasites, are descended from a winged ancestral scorpion fly, and snakes are lizards that no longer require limbs, although Pythons still grow tiny structures that are the remains of their ancestors' hind legs. Organisms are merely the outcome of the variations that succeed or fail, depending on the environmental conditions at the time. Rapid environmental changes typically cause extinctions. Of all the species that have ever existed on Earth, 99.9% .9 are now extinct. Since life began on Earth, five major mass extinctions have led to large and sudden drops in the variety of species. The most recent, the Cretaceous Paleogene Extinction Event, occurred 65 million years ago. Section 3. Genetic Drift Genetic drift is a cause of allelic frequency change within populations of a species. Alleles are different variations of specific genes. They determine things like hair color, 
skin tone, eye color, blood type, and whether you can roll your tongue. In other words, all the genetic traits that vary between persons. Genetic drift does not introduce new alleles to a population, but it can reduce variation within a population by removing an allele from the gene pool. Genetic drift is caused by random sampling of alleles. A truly random sample is a sample in which no outside forces affect what is selected. It is like pulling marbles of the same size and weight, but of different colors from a brown paper bag. In every offspring, the alleles present are samples of the previous generation's alleles. And chance plays a role in whether an individual survives to reproduce and to pass a sample of their generation onward to the next. The allelic frequency of a population is the ratio of the copies of one specific allele that share the same form compared to the number of all forms of the allele present in the population. Genetic drift affects smaller populations more than it affects larger populations. The Hardy-Weinberg Principle The Hardy-Weinberg Principle states that a large population in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium will have no change in the frequency of alleles as generations pass. It is impossible for a population of any considerable size to reach this equilibrium because of the five requirements that must be met. A population must be infinite in size, there must be a 0% mutation rate between generations because mutations can alter existing alleles or create new ones. There can be no immigration or emigration in the population because individuals arriving and leaving directly change allelic frequencies. There can be no selective pressures of any kind on the population, meaning that no individual is more likely than any other to survive and reproduce. Finally, mating must be totally random, with all males or females in some cases, being equally desirable mates. This ensures a true random mixing of alleles. A population that is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is analogous to a deck of cards. No matter how many times the deck is shuffled, no new cards are added and no old ones are taken away. Cards in the deck represent alleles in the population's gene pool. Population Bottleneck A population bottleneck is when the population of a species is reduced drastically over a short period of time due to external forces. In a true population bottleneck, the reduction does not favor any combination of alleles. It is totally random chance by which individuals survive. A bottleneck can reduce or eliminate genetic variation from a population. Further drift events after the bottleneck event can also reduce the population's genetic diversity. The lack of diversity created can make the population at risk to other selective pressures. A common example of a population bottleneck is the northern elephant seal. Due to excessive hunting throughout the 19th century, the population of the northern elephant seal was reduced to 30 individuals or less. 
they have made a full recovery, with the total number of individuals at around 100,000 and growing. The effects of the bottleneck are visible, however. The seals are more likely to have serious problems with disease or genetic disorders because there is almost no diversity in the population. The Founder Effect The Founder Effect occurs when a small group from one population splits off and forms a new population, often through geographic isolation. This new population's allelic frequency is probably different from the original population's and will change how common certain alleles are in the populations. The founders of the population will determine the genetic makeup and potentially the survival of the new population for generations. One example of the founder effect is found in the Amish migration to Pennsylvania in 1744. Two of the founders of the colony in Pennsylvania carried the recessive allele for Ellis Van Creveld syndrome. Because the Amish tend to be religious isolates, they interbreed. And through generations of this practice, the frequency of Ellis Van Crevel syndrome in the Amish people is much higher than the frequency in the general population. Modern Synthesis The modern evolutionary synthesis was based on the concept that populations of organisms had significant genetic variation caused by mutation and the recombination of genes during sexual reproduction. It defined evolution as the shift of gene frequencies within a population caused by random genetic drift, gene flow between subpopulations, and natural selection, with natural selection emphasized as the most important mechanism of evolution. Large changes were the result of the gradual accumulation of small changes over long periods of time. The modern evolutionary synthesis was the outcome of a merger of several different scientific fields to produce a more cohesive understanding of evolutionary theory. In the 1920s, R. A. Fisher, J. B. S. Haldane, and Sewell Wright combined Darwin's theory of natural selection with statistical models of Mendelian genetics, founding the discipline of population genetics. In the 1930s and 1940s, efforts were made to merge population genetics, the observations of field naturalists on the distribution of species and subspecies, and analysis of the fossil record into a unified explanatory model. The application of the principles of genetics to naturally occurring populations by scientists such as Theodosius Dobzhansky and Ernst Marr advanced the understanding of the processes of evolution. Dobzhansky's 1937 work, Genetics and the Origin of Species, helped bridge the gap between genetics and field biology by presenting the mathematical work of the population geneticists in the form more useful to field biologists, and by showing that wild populations had much more genetic variability, variability had much more genetic variability 
the geographically isolated subspecies and reservoirs of genetic diversity in recessive genes than the models of the early population geneticists had allowed for. Marr, on the basis of an understanding of genes and direct observations of evolutionary processes from field research, introduced the biological species concept, which defined a species as a group of interbreeding or potentially interbreeding populations that are reproductively isolated from all other populations. Both Dobzhansky and Marr emphasized the importance of subspecies reproductively isolated by geographical barriers in the emergence of new species. The paleontologist George Gaylord Simpson helped to incorporate paleontology with a statistical analysis of the fossil record that showed a pattern consistent with the branching and non-directional pathway of evolution of organisms predicted by the modern synthesis. We now come to the end of the spoken article, Introduction to Evolution, Part 2. The next part, Part 3, contains Section 5, Evidence for Evolution.